Hello, and thank you for joining us today on the Gentle Art of Success show, where we focus on learning and sharing with our listeners all there is to know about how to create success in our lives. This show stands on the shoulders of giants. Our mission is to empower and inspire our listeners to create the life of our dreams whilst having a blast in the process. Let's celebrate life together. Welcome to the show. So thank you so much, Lachelle, for joining us today. Uh, you know, really appreciate you, appreciate your time. Just wanted to, you know, um, you know, ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself and include something interesting most people don't know about you. Yeah, well, there's a lot going on with me, but I would say I'm somebody who has, I guess, many... Uh, things that I enjoy doing. So they call it like multi-passionate or whatever. So you know what, can I just say something? My, uh, sorry to interject, but my, my therapist actually just like turned me that multi-passionate a couple of weeks ago. So like, it's crazy. Sorry. Go ahead. Funny? No, yeah, that's I've never great. heard that term before. <laughs> it's a real thing. <laughs> it is. And it could be like, Oh, I'm, cr- I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. for me but it, sorry we're actually not so we just like doing a lot of things yes uh, nothing wrong with it yeah so <laughs> i'm a real estate investor software engineer personal trainer and i play a lot of soccer um i like to you know enjoy outdoors like nature connections and relationships um i just really like to experience life kind of through my five senses as much as i can and one thing that a lot of people don't know about me is that I'm Filipino and Kurdish. Um, so my ethnic background's a little bit different than the usual. Um, yeah, absolutely. Can I ask you, I've never heard your name before, Lashao. So can I ask you, which, where does that, where's the origins of your name? Yeah, that is, um, it is Kurdish from Northern Iraq. Okay. Yeah. So it kind of means there's some meaning to it that I run faster than a, tornado or something i'm like okay dad did you just make that up <laughs> to make yeah, you he, faster i sound like he had soccer in mind for you you know yeah right or some mm-hmm. sport <laughs> i love it though name's super unique and it's great and it's it's awesome to know about a little bit about the meaning there as well um let me ask you this um you know please share with us one of one or more of your favorite successes that you've either been a part of or just solely created on your own I guess the first one that kind of comes to mind, uh, my favorite success was um, when I went to, so at my college, it's called Goucher College, where I went to school. Um, They required a study abroad program. And all I knew was really soccer. So I was like, I want to study abroad in Spain and I want to play on a professional soccer team out there. Um, That's awesome. And that was my only intention because I know, you know, when you study abroad, it's all about the experience. There's a little bit of school, but um, school should come for- like second, third, fourth or fifth. Like once you're. Yeah. Yeah. For me, be- like there was other priorities up there. Um, so, yeah, I think the biggest success was I found a, a level. It was like division three soccer team, professional soccer team that I was able to play with. Um, and that was, that was a great success and, and using that to kind of excel my soccer career in the States was really nice. Yeah. And I think that's huge. And, you know, I think that, you know, you and I are similar in that sense where, well, the sense that you mentioned earlier, where we really like to experience life through our five senses. I love to be outside. I love to be active and doing something that could potentially get me hurt maybe, or just even just having fun, right? Something's going to, you know, give me some, um, endorphins or serotonin, but, um, you know, yeah. I never knew that about you. And I know that you play soccer like pretty regularly. Um, yeah. and that's like huge, you know, like I think any, any time anybody makes it to at a pro level or be able to work with pro athletes, you really get a certain awareness of like, it doesn't, in real life, it's completely different than like seeing it on TV, you know, and that energy is just very, very powerful. So, yeah, that's totally true. And just the atmosphere, the mentality there, everything was just so different. So 
it might have been the culture, but I, I think it's a professional. <laughs> um, these guys are getting paid to play. So, yeah, it's kind of yeah. like go, you know, go, go for broke all the time because it's their job, you know? So mm-hmm. I love that. What would you say is one of the most valuable lessons that you learned from that experience? Um, well, I definitely learned a ton of lessons just from that specifically. Uh, so it's hard to say the most value. So I'm going to give you a couple if that's okay. <laughs> Absolutely. As many as you want. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously the very first one that comes to mind is perseverance. Um, I learned that to a whole nother level because I came in there being quite success, kind of successful, like playing D1, like soccer college in US. I came over there. I was by far the worst player on the pitch or on the field. And I got shit on every day. Excuse my language. Um, I got, you know, pretty beat up and no one was really my friend. No one really liked me, but I showed up. It was practice like five day every night. I'd go every single night and I'd get better and better and better. Um, and it just showed by the end of it, like I was able to compete with these guys and I was able to, they're like, if you want to stay, you're welcome to stay. Whereas when I first got there, they were definitely not like that. So that was really, really uh, valuable to learn, like persevering, just sticking with it and doing it over and over and over um, and making progress and not doing the same thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Not getting stuck in a rut. Exactly. Or getting in your head too much, just showing up, you know, that is huge. So just showing up um, and perseverance and then, the second realization that I had is, um, and this was actually quite, kind of a few years later, actually like last year. So that's like six or seven years later. Um, it's like that if I set my mind to something and if I believe it a hundred percent and I'm hundred percent committed there, there was no doubt in my mind that I was going to play professional soccer and I was going to go study abroad in Spain and play I can make it happen. And that's kind of, that was just an example that showed me that I was like, Hey, like you did this and it's a big deal. Like if you apply this sort of energy to other things, can you get a similar result? So, yeah. And, you know, a couple of things I wanted to touch on there. So I'm um, just starting with that. Like that's a, it is a, it is a huge goal to be able to play at a professional level, right? That's a huge goal in any sport. And then to be able to study abroad, that's something that most people may dream about, but are not just even on that first one are not going to take action on, you know? Um, And one thing that you reminded me of is when you got over there, it was like before that you were sort of like a big fish in a little pond. And then you got to become the small fish in like a huge ocean or whatever. Um, But being around that sort of higher skill level, it's kind of like that old saying where you always want to be, you know, you don't want to be the smartest man in the room, you know, Uh, we can learn and yeah, Mm -hmm. the people around us. And that, that brings me back to that old quote from Jim Rohn, we're the sum total of five people that we hang out with. So, which is why, you know, it's great getting to hang out with you because we've spoken a little bit about iron sharpening iron and, you know, mostly it's like iron on your end and then clay on my end is what it feels like. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, no, I wanted to say also like, you know, excuse me. So in, and you've taken that in a physical realm, getting success in sports. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and you learn from that lesson studying abroad, but you also have had success in business. Whereas, you know, I've had success physically, like, you know, my main sport back in the day was, was skateboarding and I got mm-hmm. to a decent level. Um, yeah. and, but in, and then with music as well. Right. But, yeah. um, in business, I haven't broken through yet. So I have that same sort of, um, you know, anchor to success in life. Now it's just applying it to a different area, but I, that's why I really love that you shared that because, you've done it. Right. And so Mm -hmm. I know that I can take that and and use it and and our viewers can as well. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's the biggest thing is like, you're a high level athlete or you're had success in a different way other than business and life or success, quote unquote, um, whatever that means to you. 
Thank you. Now, how do you break down that experience? Look at it from like a 50 foot view and take it apart and be like, how do I apply the basic concepts to life or whatever I want to be successful with? And then using that, those building blocks to get to where you want to go. And one building block, you mentioned perseverance. So it, success leaves clues, right? And so that's huge. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, let me ask you this. You know, would you mind telling us a little bit about some of or one incredibly difficult experience or some of them that you've walked yeah. through and what you learned from them? You pick any one that you want or you don't have to share it all either, but you do. Have yeah, to. no, I appreciate it. <laughs> There's definitely, I mean, uh, since I met you, I've gone through a few big life changes um, and Huge. a few pretty tough experiences, I would say. Um, so the one that I'll kind of highlight is um, that this experience that I went through was back in June of this year um, that really just tested my confidence, my self-worth and like what I'm doing with my life. You know, it, it caused me to question a lot of things. And um, if you do get to know me, like I'm somebody that's going to meet you and trust you 100% right off the bat and think you're like the greatest thing ever, um, which is really great for building it's, relationships. It is great and never lose that, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, but in business, people will take advantage of you. And that's exactly what happened to me. Um, when dealing with, I was flipping a house, one of the bigger flips that I, the biggest flip that I, um, uh, acquired and, and started wanted to do, um, it was probably about a hundred thousand in rehab. It was an old Victorian house and like built in 1880 or something. Sounds cool. Um, so I was like, yeah, I can do this. And then I went through the steps. I found a contractor I trusted and he just kept asking for more and more money, um, where, and he'd make up excuses where this would go wrong or this would go wrong. Um, but in the end I found out he was using my money for his other projects and like kind of making progress on mine. Um, so all in all, I had to sell the, the project, uh, completely in worse shape than it was. The foundation started falling because, of malpractice and um i lost over two hundred thousand dollars it's not good so that was i was i had built my foundation in life um on the premise that i am financially savvy um i'm really good at business and all this stuff and this was a the biggest blow i i have received since then and it just like mentally it really shook me up um financially fortunately i was okay um but just yeah just mentally crushed me huge huge nightmare and i <clears throat> i'm almost hearing you know what's interesting is the foundation of that house crumbled right or was in shambles and that shook your foundation as as well now i guarantee whoever bought that property is fixing it up or at some point it will be back up to in great shape Okay, so and the same is going to be with you, right? You you still have the same business skills, the same financial, you know, um, mindset. You can duplicate this process, and I think you know um, from spending some time with you, I guarantee that you've learned a lot through that. And that's a two hundred thousand dollar, you know, investment in your education, you know, <laughs> and and you're. I mean, so, you know, but also from that, would you have sort of the stuff that you're working on, you know, inside yourself? Would you be doing that right now if you hadn't gone through that horrific experience? Exactly. Yeah. I, I don't know if I would be. So it's definitely opened up a lot of, you know, I've learned about what emotional intelligence is and how important like mental health is. So, yes. Uh, in the end, it, it was a really, really good lesson, but it's still a little fresh. So it still kind of hurts, but <laughs> yeah, you're right. Hey man, well, don't, don't rush that grief. You know, you got to let yeah. it, let it, uh, let it work its its way. But, um, you know, 
ultimately mm-hmm. you are an amazing person and you know you have success mindset you are success right and what you touched on earlier i think is huge we all need to kind of just remember that we are defining success for ourselves we define it for ourselves so yeah, yeah. it's hard to say like oh i'm super successful but then you know it depends on what lens you're looking at it from. So, so true. Yeah. You know, you, if you take your scenario, your life and compare it to, you know, I, 90% of the population of the earth, probably yeah. it's, it's a huge success, right? Even if you said yeah. 80%. So. <laughs> yeah. Any, any percentage. I mean, it doesn't, I think, I think that might be kind of a toxic word, to be honest, because then it leads you to comparing to other people. Yeah. Which is the death of you, because <laughs> there's always someone better. There's always someone worse. Yeah. Um, and that's something I've, I'm still working on. But, no. Yeah. yeah. So true. You know, competition and comparing yourself to other people is definitely like you know, something that you don't want to do. It is toxic. And, but, um, you know, it is nice to know that, um, you know, through your perspective at any sort of level or any scenario that you are in, if you want to experience gratitude, if you want to experience success, we Mm -hmm. define it in it's our perspective. Right. And so we don't have to wait till we earn a million dollars a year to be happy. Let's do it now. Right. Let's go outside and go skate and play some soccer or something. Or both. Yeah. yeah, or both. <laughs> yeah, so just do yeah. both. Yeah, so you see how, see how quickly we can get hurt there. Um, let me ask you this. If you were to be sent back in time to age 18, how would you fast track your success or, you know, ideal, yeah. you know, now? Yeah, um, that's a great question. And my answer, like, four months ago would be completely different than my answer now. Um, but it would be um, to get into therapy or some sort of mental health um, at that age, because at that age, I didn't have a voice. I, all I knew was soccer. All I wanted to do was play soccer, but had I found, let's say this coaching community, Jason Drew's coaching um, shout out to them. uh, Had I found that at age 18, Oh my God, (laughs) my life would be completely different. Or had I gone to therapy at age 18, how much I would have progressed and learned about myself um, and heard my voice than me trying to do it now. Um, So that, that would definitely be uh, my number one thing. And, and, you know, I would say actually that, the same thing. If I could apply, it's interesting because especially as, you know, when I was 18, for example, I was literally just a mess. Like there was no way I was going to therapy and it would have been, you know, we, we are going through the stuff that I went through and the stuff that you went through, you know, there's a saying in AA and NA that we don't wish to shut the door on our past but we will use that to be able to relate to people, to help people, to be able to learn from, and it makes us who we are. Right. But, you know, same thing. If I could have taken that pill of therapy back at 18, it would have just changed, you know, the, if I took it seriously, the trajectory of my life. And, yeah, you know, I think that's huge advice right there. Yeah. And it's like, if, if I were to look back at me, then I would not have taken that advice. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even if you were sitting in front of like, yeah, our older selves and we we're trying to convince our younger selves, we're still, we're going to think that, you know, I would have thought I was ridiculous. Literally. Yeah. There's no way like, yeah. yeah. So it's, so, it's funny to like say that. Yeah. That's what I would do. But like knowing myself back then, there's no way I would have done it. <laughs> no, which, which like begs the question, how, who are these kids at like 18 that like have it all figured out? Right. Like, I love it. Yeah. Me I mean, too. I, that's great. Um, and I, I feel like no one really has it figured out. No, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everyone just is kind of, they think it life is this way, but life could be this way, you know? Um, yeah. But I mean, people can act certain ways, but to each their own, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think there's nothing wrong, you know, uh, just acting like you, you you know it all. It may rub some people wrong, but it's also yeah. nothing wrong with the opposite, you know? Exactly. Mm-hmm. So. Let me ask you this, you know, what are your thoughts on, you know, mindset or, you know, and how to go from a non-success mindset or a lack mindset to a success or abundance mindset? Oh, that's a great question. That has been Thanks. my life for the past year, man. <laughs> so you've been I've working gotten- hard at it. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten, I turned 30 on Tuesday, so I've gotten to... Happy late uh, birthday. Yeah, thank you. (laughs) I've gotten to mid-age, whatever they call it, um, through just grinding and hard work and pushing and and putting my head down and and not thinking about anything, but uh, doing what you're told. Um, And I got to a certain level of success, um, but then I hit kind of like an upper limit and a lot of people are their upper limits. It, it depends on the person, but typically you only make a certain amount of money up as hard as you can work. So most of creating money or success or the life you want, isn't about what you're doing. It's mostly about like what you believe is possible and what you believe you can do. So I yeah. think uh, mindset is everything. Like, that's what you got to do. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, love it. I, I totally agree. And I think it's kind of a, uh, it's a fun thing to continue to learn more about and then implement and take sort of like, if you look at it as like a smorgasbord, um, which pieces of the mindset do you want to implement and which don't you, you know? And so yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, let me ask you this. If there was a key that unlocks just like one or two things that, you know, unlocked or helped to unlock, you know, success or abundance, you know, or joy in your life, what would that be? Um, that would be cool. I want that key. Yeah. <laughs> but um, for you, it's a soccer ball. Yeah. Well, it's what the soccer ball represents, um, which is basically, um, you just said mastered that real quick. I'm sorry. (laughs) but Yeah, you did. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, basically, um, it's, it's basically, you know, soccer for me was where I felt like, um, I was in flow. So nothing else mattered. I was hundred percent there present, that's all that mattered. And it represents, you know, life, basically, like your wins and losses, your ups and downs, you make a mistake, you can't get in your head, you just keep going. Um, And it basically like if there was a key that unlocked like success, um, it would be turning that key and being able to live exactly as you are right now and be happy with it and be exactly where you need to be, not thinking about a million things. Um, And if everybody was doing that, geez, man, we'd all just be billionaires walking around. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I feel like it. (laughs) Yeah. I I love that because you're really kind of what I'm hearing explaining uh, being in the present. Okay. Is uh, right along with being in take, like taking action, which I don't want it to sound to i mean cliche or whatever but yeah being in motion and not like i love that because very similar experience in in skateboarding where you can't think about anything else you're not oh, yeah. you're only thinking about what's in front of you yeah what you're doing and um you know you're gonna gets, hurt yourself if you don't <laughs> right yeah, yeah but in soccer it's like if you want to play at the highest level you have to be a hundred thousand percent focused right and you can get hurt like you know big time in soccer also and it's just like um, it's almost like better than any, any meditation I think that you could ever do, but it, it does fully take you outside of your head where I'll get a lot of analysis paralysis kind of, you know, in that, in, you know, I don't like to spend time there, you know, I think I like to, yeah. you know, come to decisions and take action. How, how would you apply that to, if there was a key that unlocked, like, how would you describe that? I'm just curious. A key to the unlock success. Yeah, man. You know, I would say that um, for me is staying uh, accountable in like accountable to somebody accountable to a, a mentor such as yourself. Yeah. And for me, that's not easy because the 18 year old, uh, 
version of myself would have just totally just left and said, I'm not, yeah. I'm going to go do something that has no um, accountability. And you know what I mean? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. but you I have to like... be careful with where it's, where that accountability is tethered to. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. Like who do you trust this person? Like, is, is it something you really want to do? Right. Is it healthy for you? Yeah. Do you hate this job or you love it? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And just to go off of that, the key to unlock success is different at different levels of life. Right. So in, in terms of me and you, like we're used to taking action. We're used to like doing too much. We're used to being multi-passionate. So the key to success isn't like taking more action, right? We already do that. It's taking the action that makes you in flow, that makes you present. So, yeah, I agree. And would you say, you know, I don't want to get too much in a tangent, but, or off topic, it's not off topic, but like, you know, sometimes in life, you got to kind of park your person, which is your vehicle or really your mind in the auto shop and to, to get some work done. Or there's that old saying, you know, Abraham Lincoln says, give me, you know, six hours to chop down a tree. I'll use I'm, you know, butchering it, but five to sharpen the ax and yeah. one to cut it. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's really where I feel it's interesting because I know you're, you're working on that, the, the inner workings of the mind. And um, I am too. It's interesting because you're, you know, quite a few steps ahead of me, but still it's like, I can relate to you. Whereas you understand. Yeah. And I, and I think it's like incredibly important because we don't want to be on autopilot, like, be, like, you know, as, as children, we sort of get, you know, we're, we're growing up in this environment, we're conditioned and we don't want to run our whole lives and then come to the tail end of it and go, wow, I could have done things differently. Or I could have, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, just, yeah, you know. that's a great point. And it's, it's all about like, you're not going to be in flow a hundred percent of your life. Right. You know, like um, you're trying to, maximize the time that you are in there but you have to you know you said park your bus like uh, sharpen the axe you gotta sharpen skills but the end end result you know is is kind of like that's where you're getting at um so it's 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 about the process of doing that and and getting to that point um more frequently throughout your life so Mm. I agree. And, you know, making sure that your ladder is leaning against the ladder that you're climbing is leaning against the right building. Yeah. Yeah. So that you're, you're going towards that, that place or you are there most of the time. Right. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Okay. Awesome. So I love it. Um, I can actually just talk about this topic right here for another 30 minutes, but yeah, me too. (laughs) Yeah. It's super me too. It is so cool. Um, and so, um, yeah, let me ask you this. Do you mind giving us one book recommendation and one tech recommendation, like an app that you may use or a book that was like, you know, super influential or you love it? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I can definitely do that. So the book that I would recommend is Martha Beck, The Way of Integrity. Hmm. I've never even heard of that book. Yeah. Martha Beck is an amazing author. She's a life coach um, and knows very, very intelligent, um, knows a lot about mental health. The way of integrity. Mm -hmm. And is she, is this book sort of, did it get you down the path of like, Hey, I need to, I want to get started on this. Like it kind of blew my mind in terms of like mental health. Wow. Yeah. It was, it was definitely a good step to, to get into where I went. And now that's huge. Thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. Um, in terms of a tech recommendation, ugh, like what apps do I use all the time? There's so many I can name, <laughs> <laughs> but um, one of, hmm, I mean, anything in the cloud is just great. So like Google Sheets is or google drive is just my jam i use that for business for life everything it's super Uh, user friendly too like i don't mean to hate on microsoft right now but (laughs) 
you know, I'm just not used to Microsoft. I'm really used to Google Drive, Google Sheets, not so much Google Sheets, but I mean, you know, Google Docs. And I love Google Docs. <clears throat> yeah, anything in the cloud is just so convenient. <laughs> it's yeah. like you don't have to worry about losing your stuff. And yeah, uh, yeah, the the book that kind of like, I don't know if it's a tech recommendation, but another one. Can I give out another one? You can give twenty if you want. We get this is this is your time. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the the one that kind of changed my mindset was the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss. That was yeah. the first one I read. A lot of people say it's like Rich Dad Poor Dad, but that that book really got me um, thinking about passive income, and it led me to Tony Robbins and Bigger Pockets. And it's a great yeah. book. Yeah, one one of the things that I always think of when I think of that book is like how he. Um, figured out the hack in like the um, Chinese kickboxing, I think is what it was where you basically, he would just push him out of bounds. Right. Yeah. And then he, he just like, it's like, cause no one else would do that. Right. But he's like, Hey, I found a way. And uh, it's just, I mean, hilarious yeah. slash seems fun. Yeah. <laughs> as long as you don't get kicked or hit, you know, in the head. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Still, it's maybe. just like thinking counterculture or whatever people call it just thinking differently yeah and just the title like planting that seed in your mind is like um, like this oh, is that's possible <laughs> yeah it's great one of the other things that i really like about that book is he talks about a lot of times the um, owner of a business will actually be the bottleneck the main bottleneck so we have to you know find people that can pick up the reins or whatever or, you know yeah yeah that's it's easy. really cool that's cool. Yeah. Um, so, okay, cool. So just a couple more questions. How can our audience like support you in any way, if you'd like, you know, and is there a particular type of deal that you're looking for or anything they can, you know, send your way or. Oh, nice. Um, right now. I mean, I'm just doing a lot of emotional work, but I mean, people to me are everything. I love connecting with people. Um, and if you want to call me and talk about, you know, emotional intelligence or mindset or the weather, I don't even care. I just love connecting with people. So um, yeah. um, if I do, if I do have to be specific, I mean, I'm yeah. getting into multifamily, like commercial and building a few luxury homes. Um, and I have a background in wholesaling and running a company. So if you ever want to talk to me about that stuff, I've, a lot of knowledge there um but yeah it's kind of what i got yeah that's awesome and i would you know a thousand percent like say reach out to the like a thousand percent reach out to him even if you just want a friend if you want somebody that like you know can um cut to the chase with you or if you just want positive vibes reach out to him like absolutely <laughs> amazing human being here so um Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. It's the truth. And uh, last thing I wanted to just kind of throw out there is how could our audience connect with you? You know, what is one of the two or three of the best ways to for them to connect with you? Yeah, you could. I mean, the best way is to just email me. It's my first and last name at gmail.com. I love that. I wish everybody would do that, man, because, yeah, <laughs> there's too many similar names, but mine's super easy. Um, just shoot me an email. Um or I have linked, I'm on LinkedIn and Facebook, so you can, I'm the only one, uh, you'll see me. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah, I'll, I can put your email in the, in the description, but also it'll be very, very easy for them to search you after your first and last name. So, definitely. yeah. Yeah. Well, Hey, Lachelle, thank you so much. Um, you know, I really appreciate your friendship outside of this and you taking the time today out of your busy schedule to drop some serious, like, Zen master knowledge with us, dude. So, and myself. So, <laughs> yeah, didn't know where it was going, but it went a great way. <laughs> it did. It always does. Like, if you and I have time, it will, it'll be, you know, or if you have time, I should say, it'll be amazing. So, love it, man. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Man. Appreciate you. All right. Sayonara. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, another episode of The Gentle Art of Success. This was an amazing episode for me, and I sure learned a lot. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to listen or watch this video, uh, this episode. And please comment, like, or subscribe, uh, all three of them, if you feel 
uh, you know, like that's something you want to do, ultimately know that I really appreciate you. And I only ask you for one thing, and that is to make this life magnificent. I hope your day is amazing. Thank you.